Hello, hello, everybody. If you're watching this back at a later date, um, I think um, people just weren't done chatting. Uh, we just wrapped up 2020. Um, looking back through all of the walkthroughs that I did in 2020 and sort of recapping what I think about the decks after having used them or if I haven't used them. Um, and, you know, I wanted to keep that concise to that topic. Um, but I think some people were still had a little chit chat left in them. Um, and I also wanted to really share this book. Um, and so I thought, okay, let's just do this. I will promise you this isn't going to be a super long video, folks, because I am tired. But, but we can have a little more chit chat. And I wanted to talk about this amazing book. So this this is no joke how I feel about this particular um, book. I'm going to push this out of the way now. Um, so I was going into the bookstore last week, and I went to pick up a, a couple books for, for a person. Um, and I saw this. Now, this was not in the, like, witchy area. It wasn't in the tarot deck area. In my Barnes & Nobles, there is a... Um, you know, there's a section for tarot, and then next to that is sort of like occult themes where there's kind of a witchy um, type of stuff, and then, you know, where your crystals and your astrology and all that stuff. This book was not in that section. It was in more of a nature-based um, section, um, and it is called The Lost Spells by Robert McFarlane, and I think the artwork is by Jackie Morris, and it's from the creators of The Lost Words. That is a book that I also have picked up since then, but it's humongous. And so I'll have to show that another day. But truly, this is the, the book that I've been obsessed with. Um, it has shown up in some readings for people that I was in the midst. I was so obsessed with like, just so in love with this book, that I would be doing readings for people. And I would start to read them poems from out of this book. Like this book has just hit all the things. Um, and it is definitely magical. I want to read, well, I'm going to read you some of this. A, the artwork is just gorgeous. But B, I want to, to read, um, I want to read this, what the purpose of this book is, because I think it is amazing. Um, this says, this is a book of spells to be spoken aloud. It tells its stories and sings its songs in paint and word. Here you will fi find incantations and summoning charms, spells that protect and spells that protest, tongue twisters, blessings, lullabies, and psalms. Here you might swoop with a swallow, follow a seal through the sea, or sky race with swifts. Here you can listen with owl ears and watch with the eyes of an oak. Here a fox might witch into your mind or flocks of moths may lift from the pages to fill the air. This is the part that gets me. Loss is the tune of our age, hard to miss and hard to bear. Creatures, places, and words disappear day after day, year on year. But there has always been singing in dark times, and wonder is needed now more than ever. To enchant means both to make magic and to sing out. So let these spells ring far and wide, speak their words, and seek their art. Let the wild world into your eyes, your voice, your heart. <sighs> like, come on, come on, Chris. I don't know why. I don't even know why you haven't bought this yet, Chris. Um, I, I, I don't like to speak somebody's um, um, personal things, but Chris was one of the people who definitely, um, yes, I'm going to. Chris has... Chris got the full force of this book, and I I, I apologize, Mr. Chris, because it, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was just out of nowhere. He certainly wasn't expecting it, but hopefully I don't think he minded. Um, so, um, anyways, um, I just, it's so hard for me to explain this. It is, it is pure magic. The artwork is absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's so hard to say. Like it is is definitely magic. So it goes through. I I definitely have read this Red Fox. 
Um, this has definitely shown up in some readings, pieces of, especially the, the last part. I am Red Fox. Why do you need me? I am your devil, your ghost, your other. The spirit of wild, the spirit of weather. Red is my fur and red is my art. And red is the blood of your animal heart. It's so, so stunning. Stunning. Um, you can use this as a bibliomancy, a hundred percent. I have used this and you know, we'll do this when I get done talking about the book. Um, I'll have to see where I stuck. Oh, here it is. I've been using it in conjunction with oak, ash, and thorn for myself. Um, that is, um, amazing. Absolutely amazing. So it has like, I mean, look at this artwork. Um, let me find the, this is one of my favorites. So this is the jackdaw and I'm going to slaughter this because um, it's very beatboxy and I am not a beatboxy person, but you have to hear this poems here. So this is the jackdaw. J -j -j jackdaw circling the back door showing off your knack for letting rip that high caw cutting like a hacksaw through the evening's calm core giving it the jaw jaw always with the comeback cold black cracker jack joker of the haystack ready with the wise crack giving it the back chat castle clatterer silent shatterer tractor troubadour talker and squawker and fable and folklore from farmyard to seashore giving it the nevermore come on. King of the chimney stack, the belfry bibiac, bright eyed steeplejack from church tower to tarmac, giving it the snicker snack. Don't call her crow or rook or raven, for she is jackdaw, gray headed outlaw fighting the class war, dipping down on quick rings, wings to hijack a wedding ring or ransack a knick knack or snatch up a gim crack while giving it the guffaw. As dusk darkens jackdaws gather to shake out feathers jam pack the brickwork pick through the tide rack nestle in the bed straw duck through the trap door fossick on the brown barn floor bushwhack the ivy gossip in the sycamore this close to sleep still giving it the click clack why not learn the jackdaw beatbox the jackdaw seesaw the jackdaw uproar the zigzag rip rap jackdaw soundtrack pulling on the rip cord furthermore and evermore giving it the chainsaw the whip crap the hee-haw giving it the where for the why for the there for the j -j 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 jackdaw <laughs> i love it so much. I made it. I want somebody to tell me what this means, though. Does anybody know what? Where is it? Every time I read this, and I have read this a bunch because I love it. I love it. Uh, there's something that I, there's a word that I don't know. Um, oh, I'm not going to find it now. Um, every time I read it, I'm like, somebody needs to tell me what that word is. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, I love this book. But that one's fun, right? But it's really not all like fun. Like it's it's pure magic. Like this to me is a book. I, I don't think that it was necessarily intended to be sort of a magic book. It's not in the magic section, but it's the magic of words and it's the bat magic of nature. The other one that I that is by the same authors is huge. Um, and that is about lost words because it takes 20 words that were taken away from children's dictionaries and replaced with other words um and they were words like willow and acorn and otter and then they were replaced like by you know more techie type modern words and they'd like these lost words that children in school are not going to have in their dictionary and so they do these amazing paintings and poems for these words that are disappearing oh so i just i can't tell you like i will literally just flip it open um, and find something and then pull a couple cards on it. Um, the artwork is stunt. Look at, look at people from my watership down class. Um, the snow hair. This is a really powerful one. This, this showed up in somebody's reading. That was really beautiful. Um, here's the barn owl. Look at, look at that though. It's not shying away from nature, is it? Um, 
Yeah. It's just beautiful. I, it's hard for me to describe um, like this one. This came up in a personal reading for me. So what I would do is that, um, you know, I would just kind of flip this open. And again, oh, no. Oh, dear. What's happening? Um, oops. Okay. Can you still see my hands? Oh, I think we lost my hands. Um, we can't lose my hands. Okay, let's see. You know what? I wonder if my phone is going to die. Let's see. Whoops. Oops. Um, okay, is it back now? Yeah, they were frozen. I think it's back. For me, it looks like it's back. My phone might die. Oh, well, I should I should have done this um, not in a live thing, but I'm just, I'm thrilled with this. So basically, like one time, I'll just flip it open, I'll read this. So this is the heartworm. Would you hew me to the heartwood cutter? Would you leave me open hearted? Put an ear to my bark, hear my saps mutter. Make my heart woods beat, my leaves flutter. Would you turn me to timber cutter? Leave me nothing but a heap of logs, a pile of brash. I am a world cutter. I am a maker of life, drinker of rain, breaker of rocks, caster of shade, eater of sun. I am timekeeper, breath giver, deep thinker. I am a city of butterflies, a country of creatures. But my world takes years to grow and seconds to crash. Your saw can fell me. Your axe can bring me low. Do you hear these words I utter? I ask this. Have you heartwood? cutter have you those who have those who sent you um and so it's that message from a tree and i love so i had pulled this and um and so like bibliomancy let me pull let me, let me um grab a deck so you can just flip it open and grab something and then pull a couple cards with it um you know there's some books like i love to use aesop's fable as bibliomancy books of poetry are absolutely amazing to use as bibliomancy in, for readings um and this one in my opinion is just like it's it's amazing to use that way um so that you can just literally like flip through just kind of I usually do this I don't know if you can even see my hands let me move this out of the way this is how I usually do bibliomancy right I go back and forth like this because that way I'm just not paying attention I try not to look at the book because I don't want to again um sort of influence like oh I see crow colors like and and like flip to it so I just you know roll it back and forth, roll it back and forth. Um, I'm generally not asking a question in these. It's just usually like, what is, you know, just kind of a message from the universe. And so then I might, oh, Chris, you're going to like this one. Um, so it, it, these do, this does have beautiful images as well. Um, this is the egret. There's a big heron one that I need to send you a picture of, Chris. So if it comes on one of the main pictures like that, I just go to the poem that goes with it. Um, hello. Hello, Julie. I am hoping you're having a wonderful, wonderful. Um, I don't know why I'm acting like she's little. Maybe she's not little. And she's like, why are you talking to me like I'm a kid? Um, but hello, Julie. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> oh. Amazon has it. I, I just bought it on Amazon for my friend for Christmas. <laughs> um, so what I'll do is I will um, open it to the nearest thing and read the poem. So ever seen a brighter sight than a little egret taking flight? God damn you if you say you have. Rip of paper, blaze of light. None quite matches egret's white. Egret out gleams ice, out flares dynamite and meteorite. Twilight grows, but egret flies on, calm and low of height, scattering night to left and right. Now, very often if I'm using it for, look at that beautiful image. Um, if there's more um, pages, sometimes I just stick with the page that I'm on. Let me grab something to weight this down. Usually I have a crystal when I'm over at my table to stick on it. Here we go. Here's a giant piece of rose quartz. There we go. So then I'll take that 
as the um oh no she's 18 she's like why are you talking to me like i'm a baby i'm so sorry julie i'm so sorry hello <laughs> thank you for watching <laughs> um so that's like the the overarching message almost like pulling an oracle card right and so we talk about you know it's talking about taking flight that the you know day is closing by but not for the egret it's that same same calmness and as it cuts through with that white it scatters the night sky right so how amazing is that so that would be sort of the main a message to me about how can I fly low? How can I stay bright? And I love the terms. You've got this beautiful white bird, but you have two, um, terms like out flaring dynamite and meteorites. So you do have that sort of explosive feeling of it. And you think about being like next to a lake when night is setting and this white bird just takes off and breaks through the darkness. And so that would be the overarching message. Like I need to be like the egret. I need to um, lay, fly low, skim the surface of whatever's going on, and I need to just burst out and clear out the darkness there. So that would be like the main message. And then pull a card or two or three like I normally do. And I've been using with this book, I've been using the Oak Ash and Thorn just because, come on, it's like made for it. Um, so, you know, again, I'm just kind of kind of showing you. So here we have the page of pentacles, which is really is really sweet, right? Pages are that open energy. Be open and ready to learn, but before you can do that, you've got to break away the darkness. Oh, the emperor, right? So we have that emperor energy come in. That low, we're going to go low, burst the darkness, and then we're going to sit in the seat of our power, right? And then beautiful um, justice, that sense of clarity that is there, uh, that sense of cutting, literally cutting through the darkness and seeing through the light, right? So then I would use that combination of the poem that's in the book um, with the cards that come up. This is one of my personal favorite things to do for myself. Again, you can use any book of poetry that really resonates with you. Um, I love doing fables. I love doing Emily Dickinson and any book of po poetry that you like. But because for myself, you know, I love nature based things. I love animals. I, you know, this, this something about this book has just um, you know, just hit me in the spot. You know, we've talked a lot about in, in the past how usually this time of year I'm, I get a book or I get a, I'm sorry, I don't get a book. I get a, um, Oracle deck that really is sort of that thing that supports me through this time of year, which is very difficult for me in terms of grief work. Um, for me this year, it's been this book, like a hundred percent. Um, this book has, really been that I mean look at that look at that it's just it's just beautiful I love the artwork the big book that I I didn't even realize how big it was um that one is as got as amazing for casting on um as well um but yeah I mean think about the books of poetry that you have that you can um, pick up and use for bibliomancy. Um, our, um, this one came up for me too. Um, this piece right here, life, dear life, suspended in that second for an age, only saved when you flew low into the shadow, swallow streamers flowing, closing up that chasm with your swooping sewing flight. Um, this, this swallow one was really, um, I can't even read the beginning part of it because it will make me cry. Um, but this one is absolutely stunning. Swallows are often, um, you know, have to do with um, sailors like coming home. Uh, my daughter has a swallow tattoo um, for my son. And so having this swallow here uh, poem and it talks about laying and listening to your child breathing um, while they're sleeping is, you know, that's bound to hit me, hit me in the feels. But, it, you know, it came up in a very, very um, powerful um, way. So, yeah, uh, the silver birch one is really snow is falling. My silver over seeker he's just amazing he's a really good um writer and she is an absolutely beautiful um artist um and you know i love this one too 
round and round the dangerous prowl, wolves and monsters, worries and witches, but the birches stand like churches as the dark around them surges. So, so beautiful. Oh, but hello, Annie. <laughs> hello, Annie. Um, get this book, read some poetry, um, Julie and Annie. Um, and they even give a glossary, which I thought was really interesting, kind of like a um, natural, like a book of natural um, things. So you have the six and it shows that it's the barn swallow. So it has this great um, thing so that you know what all the different things, um, different bits of plants um, that you might see in the paintings, the different insects that you might see in the paintings. Um, you could use even a, um, a dice. How many are in here? Like, um, you know, a couple dice and cast them and pull from it and then use that to go from. But I just use it as a, I'll show you. I'll show, let me grab it real quick. Um, I'm going to have to, it's not going to fit. So let me swap up. Um, just a minute. Let me swap up to my face only. Okay. I bought them for my Christmas present for sure, Miss Lucy. Um, let me show you. It's really big. So it's kind of like... So the, <laughs> you can see I, my head. Um, this is called The Lost Words. I don't know if Chris is still on because I've been wanting to, but I thought I was so weird when I did him, did the Fox one for him and his reading that I was felt a little bit strange to do it to him again with another one. I know it's huge, but you know what? I've cast on this. Let me show you why. So let me pull, let me read the back of this, what this is about. So on the back of it, it says, when the most recent edition of the Oxford Junior Dictionary, widely used in schools around the world, was published, a sharp-eyed reader soon noticed that around 40 common words concerning nature had been dropped. The words were no longer being used enough by children to merit their place in the dictionary. The list of these lost words included acorn, adder, bluebell, dandelion, fern, heron, kingfisher, newt, otter, and willow. Among the words taking their place were attachment, blog, broadband, bullet point, cut and paste, and voicemail. The news of these substitutions, the outdoor and natural being displaced by the indoor and virtual, became seen by many as a powerful sign of the growing gulf between childhood and the natural world. In response, Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris set out to make a spell book that would conjure back 20 of these lost words and the beings they name from acorn to wren. Um, and so that is... Um, yeah, but there are, let me just, this is going to be hard to show you, but like this one I've used, like there are huge spreads like this. Um, and I've cast on this. So I use, I've opened this up sitting in front of my Christmas tree that looks like a winter wonderland woods. And I've cast runes onto this page because why the heck not? Um, it's huge. Like there's so much space. Let me find another one I've cast on. I mean, they're gorgeous. And I'm going to find the heron one for Chris because um, I've been wanting to show him that one. I've cast on this one too. And I like the layers of the, of the hills. Um, and I've kind of used those striations um, in casting. Um, here's the heron. I'm going to read this, but I want to show this to Chris. Um, look at this heron. Chris has a has a a spirit here, a physical heron, um, which is gorgeous. But here, let's read this one. And there's another picture of a heron. Um, and this was a, a word that was taken out of the dictionary for children to learn. It's so sad. Here, her here hunts heron. Here haunts heron. Huge hinged heron, gray winged weapon, at eked from iron and wrecked from blue and beaked with steel, heron statue seeks eel. Rock still at wear sill, stone still at wear sill, dead still at wear sill, still still at wear sill, until eelis at wear sill, heron magically unstatues. 
out of the water creeks long legs heron, old priest heron, from heron in all sticks and planks and rubber bands, all clanks and clicks and rusty squeaks. Now heron hauls himself into flight, early aviator, heavy freighter, and with steady wing beats, boosts his way through evening light to roost. Um, just because um, Chris has a thing with a, a real heron, um, but I loved Chris, uh, the out of the water creeks, long legs heron, old priest heron. From here on, in all sticks and planks and rubber bands, all clanks and clicks and rusty squeaks. I just love it. And then look at that painting. Old priest, I know. I mean, come on. Come on, Chris. Um, but yeah, so this is beautiful. This is definitely much more unwieldy than the other one. But like I said, I've been using it like this one. I've used this lark side to cast on because they're just gorgeous. It's so, so beautiful. Um, yeah, there's a magpie. So this one um, has the new, like these are all words that were lost. So um, I don't know what this, but this has been my favorite. The owl one has been my favorite to cast on. Um, I don't know if this says anything different in the front. Yeah, once upon a time, words began to vanish from the language of children. They disappeared so quietly that at first almost no one noticed. Fading away like water on stone, the words were those that children used to name the natural world around them. Acorn, adder, bluebell, bramble, conquer, gone, fern, heather, kingfisher, otter, raven, raven, come on now, willow, wren, all of them gone. The words were becoming lost, no longer vivid in children's voices, no longer alive in their stories. You hold in your hands a spell book for conjuring back these lost words. To read it, you will need to seek, find, and speak. It deals in things that are missing and things that are hidden, in absences and in appearances. It is told in gold, the gold of the goldfinches that flit through its pages in charms. And it holds not poems, but spells of many kinds that might just, by the old strong magic of being spoken aloud, unfold dreams and songs and summon lost words back into the mouth and the mind's eyes. Ah, like, come on. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I have been absolutely, uh, I'm, I've been absolutely obsessed. Um, this is the book that I've been obsessed with. I haven't had the lost words. I just picked that one up, but this book I've been obsessed with. Um, again, I've used it just randomly in client readings that I just know, you know what, that's for them. And I've just pulled it out and started reading it, um, which they must think is so strange. Um, uh, although I think it's real think much of that stuff but I've also used it in the way that I showed in bibliomance you just flip through grab a page um, get the message and then pull some cards on it and it's an amazing uh, it's an amazing um, it's, an, it's, it's just an amazing way to read. So if you are looking for a book for yourself for Christmas, and this was not sent to me, I purchased this book. <laughs> um, so don't think it is It is in any way um, uh, anything. I just really I, I'm enjoyed it. Um, I know, Jada. I try to only do it with people that I know when it's appropriate. Um, when it's appropriate with people that I just think already know that I'm weird. Um, this one, I would a hundred percent. Um, I would a hundred percent recommend this one over this. They're both beautiful. This is a huge book. Um, I really went back and forth over even picking it up for myself, but I just wanted it because I'm so obsessed with this one. Um, this was definitely a Christmas present to self kind of a thing. Um, but if I only had one of these, I would not, um, I would 100% get the lost spells. Um, I just think it's absolutely, um, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. The not just the artwork. Can we see that? There's not too much. It's just uh, a beautiful blue with this. I don't know if you can see it. See the moth wings. 
I mean, it's beautiful because I usually throw these out and this won't, this won't last real long. Um, I'm really not a dust cover person. Um, so I don't know if you can see, but that's the side. It has a gold, um, um, it has a gold uh, bookmark uh, on it, but it's really beautiful. I like the embossing on it. Um, it's not shiny, but it's, it's, you can definitely see it. Um, so that will definitely end up being the way it is because I just, I don't keep these, but I do really like the cover of it. Um, but, um, and then, yeah, the insides are the moth, but I, I just, I mean, look at that. Let's see if it, does it have, I don't even think it has a, yeah, it doesn't even have, you know, um, like an index or anything. You just have to go through it. Like I've literally just kind of grabbed it, um, opened it up, um, and just went with whatever came up. Like it's just stunning. Um, and every time it has been just really appropriate to either um, myself for either myself or for the person like Willow. Obviously, I'm assuming that's like a willow, but that's beautiful. Um, yeah, Otter. Yeah, I just really have loved this. So I, and I know it's like it's one of those things like not everybody reads poetry anymore. So it's not just like the words that are being lost, but the fact that, you know, we don't read. Um, we don't, you know, we don't read poetry anymore the way that we obviously used to. And so it's not just lost words, but it's the lost power of poetry and rhythm and reading out loud. Like if you get these, like read them out loud, like read it out loud and hear it. If you have kids, read it out loud to your kids. Like um, we should never stop reading out loud to our kids. I read out loud to my kids when they were teenagers all the way through they were, you know, out of the house or whatever. Like I never stopped reading out loud to my kids. Um, we stop when kids learn how to read and it's the worst place to stop. Like it's the power of, of hearing uh, a story and just being able to sink yourself into it because somebody's reading it to you um, can never be um, replaced by, you know, you're reading it yourself. It's very different. Um, and it's so, 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 so important. And I've said it a hundred times and I'm not going to cry about it. But the last thing that I saw my 20, 21 year old daughter doing when my son was dying was read him from a book, The Hobbit. And they had been read to their whole lives. And the last thing that they did together was my daughter reading to my son. And that's, you know, that to me is such uh, an amazing, it was the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen. And if that's, you know, if that's one thing that I gave to my kids from reading to them, then I count my job done well. Um, and so don't stop reading and don't stop reading to your kids and don't stop listening. Audible books are amazing. Um, the Watership Down, the the uh, narrator of Watership Down on Audible is amazing. The Book Thief, amazing. Anything Neil Gaiman reads is amazing. Ocean at the End of the Street by Neil Gaiman, amazing. The Graveyard Book with Neil Gaiman narrating it, not the cast, but the narration of that is amazing. Let somebody read to you um, and and sink into that um, for a hundred percent. Like that that magic like I love the way that these are are put out as lost spells because they are spells they are in, incantations this is the stuff of magic and it's not a magic that we want to silently disappear from our dictionaries um, for sure um, so yeah I definitely had to to gush uh, about these books um, it's not a deck but it's, it's a piece of magic. <laughs> um, and I think that, um, oh, this magic works. I believe this magic. It's worked for me. <laughs> for sure. Um, so, yeah. So, I wanted to share that a little bit um, and um, push a book because, you know, you can't have too many books in your life. <laughs> um Yes. So, yep, that was it. Um, can you do, yes, 
um, Miss Lucy, I am happy to. We kind of did already, but I'm happy to do another one. Let me, I'm not going to do this one only because it's so big. Um, and it's just kind of unwieldy to be able to do so. But for me to sit on the floor with it, it's amazing. So we'll pull this out. Uh, I just made my teenage son read that. <laughs> read, what? oh, the book. Oh. Yeah, I, you know, it would be nice. I don't know, Miss L. It's a, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, poetry is is a. I think I think the people that take my tales class probably would be up for that. Um, okay, so let's get a message. Let's get something for ourselves uh, for a little bit of magic at the end. A little bit of magic at the end of 2020, I think, is important. Oh. Red Fox. Okay. All right. Let's, I'm going to read you the whole Red Fox. I'm obsessed with this one. Um, here's Red Fox's start. So I'm going to read this to you and then we'll pull a card to go with it. Look at that. I mean, that was the first thing that I saw. That's literally the first thing I saw when I opened the book and I just bought it. I was like, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, please. I will. I will buy this book. Like I literally opened it. I saw this, these eyes and I was like, bam. Um, Red Fox. I am Red Fox. How do you see me? A bloom of rust at your vision's edge, the shadow that slips through a hole in the hedge. My two green eyes in your headlights rush, a scatter of feathers, the tip of a brush. I am Red Fox. When do you hear me? A scream in the night that stops you dead, dark torn from dark, a bolt through the head. My sorrowful love song howled to my lover, my trash can clatter from twilight's cover. I am Red Fox, where do you find me? In cops and spinney, ginnel and alley, for I haunt city as I haunt valley, climbing the fell side, crossing the pass, walking the high street bold as brass. I am Red Fox, what do you call me? Shifter of shapes and garbage raider, bearer of fire and space invader, taker of risks and riddle maker, messenger, trickster, curfew breaker. I am Red Fox. Why do you need me? I am your double, your ghost, your other. The spirit of wild, the spirit of weather. Red is my fur and red is my art and red is the blood of your animal heart. Um. This is about our, and I love the way that the end of this poem flips it back to us. So we're saying, he's saying, I'm Red Fox. Why do you need me? Because the red is the blood of your, and it's calling your, his call is calling up to our, our heart. It's in our heart. And so it's calling out the trickster. It's calling out the, the push, the boundary pusher. Um, it's calling out the shifter of shapes within us. It's calling us to be tricksy. It's calling us to be smart. It's calling us to be wily. It's calling us to, um, you know, to all of that we just read, um, to be all those things. Things and to slip out into the night, which is so wonderful. But let's pull a card to go with it um, for our little reading here. And this is this is a wonder. Again, I promise you don't need this book to do this. I do too. I do too, Chris. It just kills me. Um, you don't need um, this book um, to do that, right? Pull, pull any book of poetry you have. Pull a book of quotes. Flip it open, stick your finger on it, and then pull a card. It's an amazing way to read. Um, words are powerful oracles, and to use them in, conjunc in conjunction um, with your decks is, is a great um, it's a great gift. So let's see what card we get with this. Here we have the two of swords from the oak, ash, and thorn. And so 
Um, the, the two of swords for me is about bringing our head and our heart together, right? What is the red fox? The red fox is that smarts, that clarity that's there. But the heart of the red fox is also the one that's howling a sad song for his lover, right? That we saw that's haunting the valleys as well. And so the, um, and it's our double as well with the two of swords. Yes. The two of swords. I have a two of swords tattoo. Um, it is definitely my card because it is a card of choice that comes when we bring our heads and our heart together. If we lead only by the tricksy side of the fox, then that's going to sometimes get us by, but it's only going to get us by so far. If we lead only from the wild heart side of things, then we might get lost in what we're trying to achieve. But when we bring the head and the heart, the tricksy and that wild hauntedness of the fox together, um, that's when the swords open and we find our path forward. So to have the call of the fox and the call of the two of the swords to bring your head and heart together to do the tricksy, but also bring that heart blood. That is, um, you know, that's the message here for, for you tonight, which is um, absolutely amazing. <laughs> I just love this book so much. It has not failed me once. And it's really been, like I said, it's been my Oracle deck for December. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so, so beautiful. Um, yes, um, Shadowscapes, Shadowscapes has amazing foxes for sure. Um, yeah, Shadowscapes for sure. So, okay, I am going to wrap this up. I know this is short, but I just wanted to show you this just kind of revel in words and the magic of words and the power of magic. Um, and to show you this, what I think is a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, again, of the two, I would definitely recommend The Lost Spells. Um, I just think it's amazing. Um, and I think that it can be used just to read. It can be used just to fall into the art with, um, but it can definitely use uh, be used for messages. Um, and I appreciate um, people allowing me to nerd out a little bit on poetry and books <laughs> um, and divination and um, that there are some people out there in the world who um, can handle the, that degree of nerdiness. <laughs> I really do. If I don't see you, I, I plan to see you before that. I'm, I'm still hoping to get a, a caroling uh, video out there. We'll see how it works out. But if I don't see some of you before then, I do wish you a wonderful rest of 2020. Um, take care of yourself, recharge yourself, find a space for some joy, find a space for some peace. Um, and, um, you know, this, that's all continue to be kind to each other um, and hold each other up. And I really wish nothing but love and joy for all of you. And I appreciate you letting me babble. So good night. <laughs> oh.